safety level. Okay. Good. Hum. <coughs> yoga is, is, is the essence of Kang. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was thinking this morning of Gangster Squad. Ah, ah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, that My <laughs> duties to the law. <laughs> That's for you, Angari. <laughs> she is doing great. And she wasn't starstruck by you guys at all, which was uh, really funny. It was weird. It was off totally weird. Actually, how we dare totally she? Totally disregarded. <laughs> living nice for a little. Yeah. You know? She was, she was like, like, I met her. I was like, hi, I'm Ryan Gosling. She said, could you get me the sandwich? Yeah, she was she like, hand me a sandwich. And she was more, could you introduce me to Blake Lively? <laughs> According to her, day. we're kind of more like her naughty younger brothers. Yeah. <laughs> well, she called you her uncle. In, in, in the sense that, you know, the, the, the advice that you gave her were, were like cool uncles more than, than father figures. How did you work cool. with her first? Let's start with that. Well, let me tell you my observation of him working with her. He set such a platform for her to relax. He was, I was just talking to him about this a few minutes ago. He was so gentle with her and so accepting of her and focused on her when she talked. And so she just took that like, oh, this is normal. You know, so mm. she gave of herself every day and her perspective on everything was really intelligent and stuff. But he set that. He did that. He set the platform for her. And I was just saying early on, it just indicated to me that he's going to be a great dad in the way he worked with her. You know? Thanks, Ben. Well, look, she's amazing and it's obvious. When she walked into the room for the audition, it was like answered a lot of questions that I had, things I didn't know how I was going to play. You know, she just walked in and I thought, oh, that, that's how that's going to work. And I was a child actor, so I, I kind of, I remember what it felt like to be on set and uh, to not know what your place is or where, if your ideas are valued or not or why you're there, you know, exactly. Are you there because of how you look or how you said that audition? Are you supposed to just be, be that way all the time? You know, there's a lot of things you're, you're really in the dark. So um, I tried to make sure she knew that we wanted her opinion and she has very strong opinions. You know, she knew she wouldn't, you know, once she, that was an option, she was like, okay, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't do that, I would do this, and it made the scenes better. It was just helped the film. Yeah, the, the movie feels very organic anyway. It feels like everybody was, you know, acting it as they feel it. Of course, acting is calculating, but uh, this really felt like a genuine, enjoyable project. Wasn't yeah, a it? lot of that, though, is, you know, if you have the person at the head of that is always going to direct. The film is the director's medium. You know, the director's going to set the tone. If Shane wasn't as you know, relaxed and open and willing for us to try things and stuff, it would be a different environment. But, you know, he, I think with his experiences as a, they've accumulated, he was in a situation where he's on a set, he knows exactly what he wants to do, he's got a producer who is letting him do the thing that he feels is right. So it was just a great environment, you know, between Joel and Shane, you know, those guys set uh, an environment where everybody, us to begin with, you know, could just feel like they were contributing. And that's a very healthy and fun environment to go to work to in every day. You know? And they loved what people brought, not only us, but I mean, I thought it was really, it was so, you know, charming because they, it didn't matter if a person had one line in the film, if they, if they, if they delivered it great, they were just, they, that's all they talked about all day. They just, they just, they just, there was such fans of talent that anybody that had it, they were just celebrating it. And so it makes for everyone wants to kind of, you know, uh, dig in and bring out you know, the, the and for as much action is, the, yeah. a, a, is there is as there is in, in this movie, you know, sometimes the director can because that's the stuff that really takes a lot of thought that then gets caught up in that, you know. But Shane's perspective was always, "Where's the performance?" You know, that was his first question across everything that he was doing. You know, so that again, great environment for actors to be. In. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and there was and never really any pressure to be funny. I'm sorry, no. but just as you were saying, I remember. I never ever remember him giving a note that was in the direction of comedy. It was always in the direction of character and in the truth of it. And plot. Know, yeah. And plot. Mm. And, and I, love, I love the mixed genres, the aromas of the 70s and the flavors of the film noir. <laughs> the aromas of the yeah. 70s. <laughs> Another beautiful the way, way to put, put it. <laughs> what a turn of phrase that was. <laughs> Did you feel like you were... Well, in it's in smell of vision <laughs> yeah. In certain uh, countries. I'm, we're glad you picked that countries. up because it was a lot of money. Cyprus, you can True. see it in smell of vision yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Did you feel like you were deconstructing a genre that you know very well, talking about Gangster Squad and LA Confidential? You know, you've done a very serious version of that type of story, but it was very, very different. Well, it's a relief not to have to play, you know, the seriousness of everything. You know, a lot of times humor gets uh, sort of surgically removed from drama as though, like, it can't exist there somehow. Meanwhile, I think in this, or at least 
you know, what I felt was that it's you can, um, you know, you, you can sort of uh, it, disarm somebody with, with the, the, the humor can be disarming. And then there's an opportunity to catch them off guard with, with an emotional uh, impact, you know. And for you? Well, yeah, as funny as the, the movie is, it, you know, the characters themselves, because they're so rumpled and, you know, uh, <laughs> you know mistreated by the, their own personalities, you know, it just gives you <laughs> such an opportunity <laughs> to create funny things because, you know, people are observing that person fails so dismally at life, you know? So, yeah, but there's those moments because the characters have heart. And that's one of the hardest things, man. You can, t you can do everything right in a feature film, but if it doesn't have a beating heart, nobody wants to watch that film, you know? And that was, it's so clear in this film that, so you get these beautiful moments with these characters that you've been laughing at, you know, for quite a while, and they'll, they'll turn on a dime and do something, and now you connect to them as well. You know, so you have an emotional connection to these people that you, you know, obviously think are schmucks and you're, you're laughing at, but at the same time, there's a pathos created between the characters and the, the audience, you know? It's cool. Well, I did like their costumes, and we have to note that Ryan is wearing a beautiful 70s style kind of... He, he's a pro. I'm doing my part. So He's always dressing up in costumes. Yeah. Always. And you know, this no morning, Hawaiian shirts it was, for you. It was a bit, it was a bit strange. <laughs> I was dressed like Gladiator this morning. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. But it was, for him, he, he didn't get great. a sword. He got a baguette. <laughs> <laughs> he was running around the gardens. I sharpened it. You know, Are you not entertained? <laughs> and it's a really strange voice. <laughs> that would be so funny. You know, woman, you just went up to a woman and hit her across the, the buttocks with a baguette. Like, I thought it was funny. Yeah. She it, did. It you keep each other entertained. She, she was in pen. <laughs> it's a good time to cut. Yeah. How did you guys becoming directors change your perspective as actors? I was, what was that? How did you guys becoming directors yourselves uh, change your perspectives as actors? Um, I well, you, you're better at this. Okay, you take this. One. Not at all. It just confirmed over the years what I'd always <laughs> known. I have been right, and you can shoot a day more efficiently, and you can get you know. Uh, that sort of focus and concentration out of a crew and, and have them loving what they do even though you're working as uh, many long hours and as hard as uh, you, you can, you know. And uh, I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. You know, the aspect that you don't necessarily get to contribute to, you know, the framing, the choices of colours, you know, exactly how you extract information, how you deliver information to the audience. I just loved it and I can't wait to be doing it again. Right. Yeah. What did you what do did, it again? What did I learn or what did I do it again? What both? <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I have two things that whatever one's ready first I'll do. Like I, I feel the same way as Russ does. You know, I think it's it's uh, you know, as an actor it's an incredible an incredible job and opportunity, but you only um, you're only a part of a small part of it, you know? And and making movies is is, is the greatest job in the world and, and you wanna have a part of every every aspect of it. And uh, so that's that's exciting, you know. And also, I think, but I think doing it made me realize how important ac acting is because you rely on your actors to tell the story. You know, you can set the table as much as you want, and you can tell the story as much as you can. But at the end of the day, if you don't have actors that are bringing, you know, inviting the audience in to come along on this ride, um, you're in trouble. And so, you know, I think that I came back to acting with a new enthusiasm uh, and uh, was excited to do it again. There's a certain type of narrative-focused actor who is going to find the transition to direction very easy. You know, There's obviously going to be a lot to learn and it's going to be a curve that remains steep throughout your career as a director because that's the nature of that job. But if you're narrative-focused to begin with, then directing a movie is very simple. You know, If your focus comes from elsewhere, then I would imagine the directing would appear to be very complex. And, and you know a very hard thing to achieve but you know if you're a storyteller as a natural part of your personality then the medium of film is so malleable and so magnificent once you get inside it that it's just you know uh, it's such a, a deeply pleasurable way to spend your time very true.